that we did was um, in a 200 level medieval art and architecture class and uh, because I couldn't fly students to Europe to look at actual medieval cathedrals um, we worked on cathedrals churches that um, use the characteristics the architectural characteristics of medieval architecture um, and because Mount Carmel has a really great selection of those, we landed there and of course, you know, we also got a lot of help from the field station. So it just seemed like a, a really appropriate place for the students to do ori original research on uh, the churches that were there. And it was interesting because the different denominations of the churches chose different styles. The Catholic Church was more French Gothic, um, some of the other churches were, the Protestant churches were um, more like medieval English architecture. Um, the students got a couple of things. Uh, first, they got to work on actual buildings instead of just sitting in class looking at slides. And the other thing that um, I think maybe in the end this was more valuable for them, they got to see what a different kind of community than that that most of them grew up in was like. And they got to talk to people in Mount Carmel. Um, and I think that was a really valuable experience for the students. Um, what did the people of Mount Carmel receive um, in turn? Well, in the end, uh, they received, each of the churches that we worked on received nice little brochures that they could give out to the people in um, their congregations and to visitors. And the other thing that they they did. This, the, the brochures were written by the students with a little help from me. Um, there's also a website that the students made um, on the churches there. And the third way that, that the information they found out was communicated to people in Mount Carmel was by a walking church tour that I did that was largely dependent on the information that the, the students had come up with. And this is maybe where I learned something. Um, we went through, walked through Mount Carmel, and went from church to church. And I was beginning, to, you know, after about five minutes in, I was feeling kind of uncomfortable because I was there as the expert. And I was kind of rapidly thinking, okay, so I have this knowledge of uh, medieval art and um, medieval revival architecture, but the people in Mount Carmel, they have an everyday experience of these buildings. And so I kind of was switching up my talk as we went along, and by the time we got to the second church, I was kind of giving my little introduction and then turning it over to the people who worship there. And I was asking them what their experience of the building was. And I think that was really helpful. It maybe made people think about uh, where they worshipped in a slightly different way. You know, they, it, it maybe brought um, their physical surroundings um, a little bit more alive for them. So I learned a lot from that experience too. In fall 2019 semester, uh, I decided to offer a university course, uh, which is um, which was digital depth contemporary stories from the cold region, and it was a half credit melon confounding problems course, and uh, it sort of acted as an extension of my arts 234 digital photography course and uh, with an intent uh, to um, help students to um, find ways to develop um, a mindset uh, that uh, kind of encompasses social responsibility, work ethic, um, and a deeper understanding of the importance of inclusion of diversity in so many different ways. 
uh, when creating and publishing artistic work. So um, uh, the process was very interesting because uh, it was very experimental. Uh, we actually were in the role of being both insider and outsider. <laughs> insider in the sense that uh, we, of course, occupy, uh, uh, you know, a, a, an existence in this lens where we share this land uh, with our neighboring coal region uh, communities. Uh, yet uh, we have a very least interaction with them. So it allowed us to actually get to know the community better. So a couple of Saturdays, we um, took field trips and uh, to uh, Mount Carmel and Shimokin with the help of many community leaders and community organizers. And uh, so the students really um, were grouped into uh, it, it, they were tasked with various, you know, of course, uh, uh, responsibilities, and then they were grouped. Uh, and one group, for example, really worked in the library to look for the history of the region. Um, the other group interviewed the local community, and the other group kind of went in around and did the parade like Halloween during the Halloween. Um, they they are very big on Halloween and also community dinners, community brunches, community lunches. So um, they attended those. So we tackle you know all of the uh, you know family family oriented community um, events um, uh, firsthand, and uh, the community was very welcoming. Of course, they opened their hearts and. Uh, minds to us uh, and their homes to us and some of my students even cooked with them like their like traditional you know pierogies and all these you know delicious uh, local uh, delicacies so and then we also get to eat them so um, and then during uh, all of these mingling sessions of course uh, uh, the community was being photographed by the students and uh, we did not do a lot of formal uh, uh, formalism when it comes to photography. We did a lot of intuitive photography, mainly because we did not want the medium to interfere with the natural flow of things. And, and um, Sometimes, uh, I mean, especially right now, we're very much used to smartphones and, you know, and, and that comes with a lot of ease on the medium. Uh, so uh, in this instance, of course, they were using their uh, professional DSLRs. And sometimes when uh, uh, your subject uh, really feels and sees that DSLR, they may feel very intimidated by it, but um, uh, we actually use that DSLR camera uh, the way that we would kind of photograph with our smartphone. Uh, and the reason that we use DSLR because actually the lens capacity capabilities of a DSLR is much better than a smartphone. That's the reason why we actually stick with that and instead of using our smartphones. And also, you know, um, some, uh, you know, it has, you know, of course, positives and negatives because, you know, the camera when also the folks see the, the camera, they may be intimidated by it, but they may also take us more seriously <laughs> because they see a hmm, nice, you know, professional camera. Uh, anyhow, so really, um, we did Saturday. I mean, the students were very, very determined to get up early on Saturdays, and, and and they were determined to take the whole day spending time, you know, until until uh, dusk, you know, um, with the community and uh, with me, and uh, so um, um, it was an amazing. Uh, it ended up really, uh, you know, um, having this incredible friendly kind of book, which is really 
not so much, not so historic and not so didactic, but it's a very um, first response type of, you know, very um, friendly book. Um, and uh, because I know that some of my students were very critical and honestly, I was also, you know, in the beginning, very critical because maybe I did not know enough. So uh, we really totally immersed ourselves. And I mean, as much as we can, of course, you know, still you know, um, there's that, of course, you know, insider, outsider kind of, um, you know, dichotomy that, that comes with it. But uh, so it's, um, and as a result, uh, we end up having like thousands and thousands of photographs and videos and, so the most difficult part was not to really have this footage or to have access to archival or historical information. The most difficult part for us was to really edit, to make selection among, among all of these um, hundreds, thousands of photographs um, because you know we did it together. I did it with, together with 12 students. And actually it's their project. I. I was just a facilitator, really, you know, so, um, and then um, that editing process and uh, how to design the book, how to form the book, and how to really order the book, and, you know, all of those things uh, came to play, and by December 2019, uh, we um, have the book in our hands. And so, uh, and then we shared this book with the community as well. So, and then each student actually got uh, two copies, one for, you know, keeping a record of, of it for themselves and one for actually donating it to their local library, wherever they're from, if they're from New Jersey and a town in New Jersey and a local library, so they donated the book. To them. Of course, we donated books to um, Mount Carmel and Shemokin's libraries as well, as well as I think we have one in Bertrand here. We have one in Shasquena. So like the whole region also, we donated the book. So it was a very um, um, intuitive, uh, informative, uh, and an amazing learning opportunity for everybody involved. And I think that uh, the community also, Coal Region community also, was kind of excited and, you know, to, to host us. So, uh, because they were very much open, open to, um, to welcoming us to their homes or to their uh, communities or, you know, like weekend activities whatsoever. So, so for the Centralia project, it was um, based on uh, responding to one of the needs again from the community. Uh, so, uh, the Coal Region Fuel Station, you know, has a a great list that that gives us projects that are ongoing that uh, that, that need follow up. So, my design class responded to uh, a study that uh, Professor Vanessa Massaro's geography class had done about revitalizing efforts in Centralia. And part of that had to do with, you know, kind of reimagining what could be possible in terms of marketing, branding, possibilities of, for making Centralia kind of like a, a heritage area. Uh, so my class took that on and th the project started growing uh, more in that, it, you know, it was partly, of course, kind of like thinking, well, okay, how do we brand Centralia as a destination potentially? And then, but, but what was cool is that as we started interviewing and going to Centralia, meeting with uh, you know citizens who had lived in Centralia, and talking to them, it became more also like this um, memory project. Uh, so, the students pitched the idea of putting together a magazine that collected these stories, collected the history of Centralia, and then also some of their ideas about you know what could you know what are some of the things that could be done you know to you know in, in the area of Centralia. On the one hand, we did respond to, you know, that study that Professor Massaro's class had done. Uh, and then it was really aimed at people, uh, first the citizens of Centralia, you know, because it presented their story, it presented, you know, what occurred in Centralia. And uh, also for 
a general audience for folks that didn't know or don't know about Centralia. Uh, the the magazine was was pretty informative in telling in telling them what had happened, uh, the experiences of the people, what what it was like to have to move out from your homes after the fire started, uh, their treatment after the fact, and I, I felt it was just a very informative piece. So I, you know, broad audience, I'd say. You know, it, I I'd been to Centralia before, uh, just um, you know, my own, just because I I heard about it. Um, and it, uh, it's always for me been just uh, mixed feelings. But taking students there too, and, and, and you know having you know uh, Shauna was with us in, in one of the trips, and then having um, you know some of the former residents talk to us about their experiences, um, it was for me a, a very humbling experience about you know. Just in some ways, uh, the, how fast things can change for you, you know, when you're settled in an area and, and something like this happens that, that kind of uproots you. Um, so we shared a dinner with the citizens um, over in, in Mount Carmel and students got a chance to talk to them, meet with them. And uh, we all came away from it with just, a, you know, a deep sense of respect for, for the citizens and you know, the area itself, Centralia itself. That project started in fall 2017, and it came through a collaboration between uh, management students in Professor Eric Martin's class and a student doing an independent study with me who had done graphic design. And as part of their um, culminating project, they decided to come together and work with the Mount Carmel Development Initiative at that time. Uh, to help with their uh, rebranding efforts and marketing efforts for the revitalization efforts down in uh, Mount Carmel. Uh, so that was fall 2018. And then because it was such a large project, it continued into spring of 2018. So it, it, it really spanned about six, seven months of work. But that came through that, uh, that Mount Carmel Deve Development Initiative. Uh, so they had um, reached out to, uh, I believe, to Shauna and the, um, uh, the, the Coal Region Field Station uh, asking for you know, assistance in, 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 in the project. Uh, and then Eric's students um, started doing a marketing analysis. And then my students started, you know, jumped on board, essentially chained up with uh, those students. And together they started responding to the community's needs. So the, uh, the culmination of that, so the, the marketing students did a, uh, a really great marketing analysis for uh, the, the MCDI. And then my uh, graphic design student uh, went in and essentially created all the branding, the logos, uh, set up a website, um, social media, and then a number of um, promotional materials that uh, MCDI could use. So I think we had things like, um, T-shirts printed, uh, um, bags, uh, mugs, you name it. Uh, a lot of bunch, a bunch of things that had the, the new branding for Mount Carmel on them. And it, from what I remember, it was really, really well received by the community. And it was awesome to see the students engaging, asking questions, um, and just having honestly a good time working with them in, uh, in collaboration with the community. I think the main thing that the projects inspired is, you know, the importance of working with community and responding to community asks um, rather than just like kind of dictating, oh, this is what you need, if you will. So for me, the main thing that's kind of just, you know, kind of ingrained in me is the fact that, you know, I, I uh, making sure that w when my classes are working with a project that is community based, that it is responding to a community's needs and how important that is for classes to engage in that. So I've made it a point for my design classes usually, you know, do some sort of community engaged project uh, that brings com the students into the community and brings the community into the classroom. And I think that it, you know, one thing that I try to do is make sure that that's a beneficial relationship, um, specifically towards the community members. And uh, that's kind of like the biggest takeaway for me and the, the, the fact that this is something that's possible um, and that it's for me almost at times almost an obligation, you know, to, to make sure that my students are feeling a sense of, of belonging in this community and that same thing, that, that our community belongs in our classrooms.